Yo, what up, Chuggalos? <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of She Ruined My Career podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, today, we got a long list of stuff to get through. Yeah. The first of which is The Groundhog came out. Oh, I, yeah, okay. Yeah. Is that, wait, is that today? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Well, today, the day we or record yesterday. this, this is, it, yeah, maybe yesterday. It's either February 1st or February 2nd, I can't remember. But um, I was watching Roll for Sandwich, mm. and um, he did the intro three times, like he just replayed it oh, three times. Oh, that's cute. But I thought my phone was fucked. Oh. Because I... I yeah, I don't it's even. It's just one of the. It's a stupid prank. I don't pay attention to Groundhog yeah. Days. I was like, "What the hell?" I restarted my app like four oh. times. <laughs> but um, no, it was just a cute little. Yeah, yeah. Little thing. It's a good movie. Yeah. It is a good movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I didn't. What was watch the that. lesson of that movie? Like, don't don't be a jerk. I guess. Yeah, something yeah. like that. I mean, he was just like um, very self centered, right? And um, he he only really he was basically just a narcissist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of an incel as well, right? <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, he he was just like kind he of like trying to get the babe and she's like every he was playing like a meet and fuck game and it's like, "No, nah, dude, like it ain't that." Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And well, that was when he was like trying to figure out why. Oh, okay. He was like right, problems. right. Yeah. Yeah. Fun movie. movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love that concept. Yeah. We should have more uh movies that are that like kind of that way. Like I, I'd, I would enjoy seeing a modern Groundhog Day with Timothy Chalamet and <laughs> Timothy. Uh, I don't. Maybe not Timothy Chalamet. No. Uh, modern Groundhog Day. Who who would be a good cast for that? I think Pascal is the hot. He's the hot guy the hot in commodity. Hollywood. I think he would like. It would be cool to see him in that role. Yeah. Yeah. True. Um, um, who's the guy that played Thor? What's that guy's name? Uh. <laughs> well, I don't Andrew know. Garfield. No, but I almost said Heath Ledger for some reason. <laughs> no, because he's Australian as well. Um, Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. That's my pick. Nice. I like. Oh, it's very random. Yeah. Why? Why is that, Dane? Because uh, he's he's funny. He's okay. handsome. Dane thinks he's handsome. That's. Funny. By the way, just for the audience, there is weird little like frame glitch whenever it switches to my camera. We just switched to OBS. Yeah. yeah. We're testing new things today, so. Sorry. There might be some some glitches in the matrix. Yes. We're crossing our fingers and hoping that the whole thing goes well, but if it doesn't, that's the reason. <laughs> Don't blame us. Wait, Actually, you can blame us. Should be but, fine. You know. Who would you pick? Uh, someone goofy. My my head immediate went, immediately went to Johnny Depp. <laughs> but like <laughs> But I think it's because I associate him with all these goofy characters, yeah, <laughs> uh, which isn't really fair for mm. the role. Um, I think, I think it should be a uh, a comedian. Okay, I think it, it would be nice to have uh, like a comedian. That's why I said Chris Hemsworth because it would be funny to have a, a funny person who is like who mm -hmm. looks the part of being an, a kind of an, a dickhead. Right? Oh, yeah. and that's yeah. what, uh, he could. Pull off like smarmy Wait. asshole, and then. Okay, I have the answer. Uh, huh. Matt Rife. Oh, I mean. Matt Rife, Groundhog Day. Why would? But you... it's him. But it's real. It's it's him right, reliving right. the Netflix stand-up special night. Right, right. <laughs> over and over again. And he has to tell different jokes every, every yeah. day. Okay. Oh, but the reason I brought up the Groundhog Day thing is that the Groundhog. Did not see its shadow. Oh shit! Which okay. means, yeah. What does that mean? Another <laughs> six weeks a winner. Or no. Oh. Oh. Wait. He did. Okay. He did see a shadow. What does that mean? Short winter. Yeah. Short winter. <laughs> <laughs> that freaking yeah. little bitch. Is that where the damn sun's out today? I was actually bummed out about that. <laughs> yeah, that me was, too. That's the reason. It's, yeah. it's that damn groundhog. That Fuck damn that groundhog. little groundhog, little bitch ass. I, I literally woke up and I, I literally said out loud, I was like, why is the sun out? <laughs> yeah. Ew. Yeah. No, it, uh, the groundhog thing is cute, mm -hmm. and I like it because it's it's oddly pagan for America. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Like, that seems like a very pagan thing to do. Like, the animal 
comes yeah. out at the certain time and we look at the shadow. <laughs> yeah. and right. team, like that's right. Like, it's, I don't and know. it's good. It, it's like really cool that like a, I don't know, the general public is like down for yeah, it. Yeah, we're, we're on. We're yeah. in it. And you, don't, and you don't take it that seriously as no. well. And it's kind of like, you know, I, I feel like in the same way, we should have the same attitude towards like astrology That's or what something. I'm, I was just going to say. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, I mean, energy. if you're going to give some credence to the fucking uh, ferret. Yeah, not the, ferret. The fat ferret. <laughs> the fat yeah, ferret. fucking stupid squirrel on the ground. <laughs> yeah. You should make a... Um, a video around that on your yeah, squirrel channel about P- pucks tawny sorry i feel like we should okay i probably i don't know if you guys can tell but i'm sick oh, i sound yeah. sick i feel like we should just like get this out of the way nip now. in the bud so we the last podcast public podcast we were talking about how ian couldn't stop puking yes and we were trying to theory craft on like what was going on well two days after that i started puking mm-hmm. uh because we had norovirus which mm-hmm. we talked about on uh the patreon podcast. we didn't di- get diagnosed though we didn't get diagnosed officially from a doctor they didn't stick they didn't check our blood or anything yeah but we were but fucking. we had the winter vomiting disease is what it's called <laughs> so yes yeah so we had yes. the, the the winter vomiting disease which is norovirus <laughs> yeah, yeah. um and uh i got better and then uh, I got a sinus infection mm-hmm. um, because the virus moved in through my mucus into my yeah. sinus. Not COVID. Not COVID. And not COVID related. It's, it says COVID related. Not, it's not COVID, yeah. just to clarify. But it does suck ass and my nose is clogged and my mucus is yellow. Okay. Too much information. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Back to Phil. Uh, I should Dumpy? meet him because that's like uh, a Puxtani Phil. Oh, the the groundhog. Is he from? I, why do I feel like that bitch is probably from like Philadelphia, Pennsylvania? East Coast somewhere. Because I like I, I I think it's because his name's Puxtani Phil. Yeah, that's an East Coast thing. Well, Puxtani's probably a town. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere on the East Coast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I should meet him because he is oh, like <laughs> a a famous squirrel, basically. Oh, nice. There he is. I don't think he likes being held like that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. He looks like he's done. Yeah. Puxatani retirement. <laughs> Man, that's a good, like, uh, a good griff to have, I feel like. I like the top hat. Yeah. That that guy has. I know. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like this dude. Well, I, I presume this dude. Do you think he's the handler or yeah, the mayor? I think he's, he's the mayor. Oh. Puxatani's mayor. Because doesn't the mayor, like, isn't yeah, it? probably. You get on stage and you're like, "Yeah, that's such a, a bonus for being the mayor of a particular town." Get to it's manhandle like, a. Yeah, we're we're kind of historic here. We yeah. got a thing. You were right, Ian. It is in Pennsylvania. See, okay, oh. nice. Yeah, that sounds like a. a what a weird name, Piaxitania. <laughs> Piaxitania. Piaxitania. Yeah, I'm from Piaxitania. <laughs> very South it's Park. Very kind of strange, man. <laughs> Seeing it like written out like that. That's bizarre. What's the origin of P- Piaxitani? I mean, it looks like it's uh, maybe has some Indian reservation. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Indigenous. Yeah, yeah. Name of Indian origin. Jesus. I mean, it says Indian. I'm just I know, I know. It's just crazy that that's... <laughs> uh, interesting. Okay. That, ma- that makes sense. Like, uh, wait, does Sue... I always say it pronounces Suix, but Sue ends with an X. So there is, mm-hmm. like, uh, presumably a lot of Native American... Uh, words that have the x in there i didn't even know what sioux is yeah. what's that i think it's a location like sioux falls oh. i think oh I don't know. yeah 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 that makes yeah but yeah. i had always been told that um the o-u-x mm-hmm. is french it yeah. is and, it, and it's pronounced with the o sound oh well uh, maybe that one then is well specifically french who knows metis yeah metis is uh indigenous uh, French indigenous. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. There, Métis is uh, a very popular tribe in Canada, mm. but I don't know. Probably in probably the East Coast as well. Yeah. In America. Yeah. I would, I would imagine. Yeah, that you know, at a time those borders didn't exist, so yeah, no. Sense. In Harry Potter, there's a, uh, a another school in France called uh, Beaubatons, <laughs> and and when I was reading it. <laughs> 
Wait, why are you laughing at that? Uh, just, the name. I, well, I was just, no, I was just reminded. I don't know what it's from, but there is like a just the fact that there's a bunch of different schools oh, yeah. in the Harry Potter universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't really think, check out. Yeah, I think someone did like a video on it or something. And it was very bizarre and yeah. didn't make any sense. Yeah, it's kind of a plot hole. But regardless, uh, when I was reading as a as a young boy, I th- for when I was reading, I thought it was pronounced uh, Bokes. Bokes Bottons because of the X. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and then when I saw the movie, they were like, oh, Bobatons. I was like, what the hell? French people are wild. You know what? Um, the, I had that experience with uh, Hermione's cat. Oh. Um, it, its name was like... Uh, Crookshanks. Crookshanks, but oh. I think I read it differently. So when mm-hmm. I heard it in the... Well, now that the... Mo- sounds like how I would pronounce oh, it. Oh, I also read Hermione as Hermone. Yeah, I was going to say, when that book series came out before the movies, yeah. everyone thought her name was Hermone. Yeah. Hermone. And then the movies came out, they're like, what? Hermione? Oh, okay. Yeah. Because Hermione, I don't think that... Is that even a name? Or did Harry Potter came up with that? Because I, I don't think... Like, you'd think that more people would know Yeah, I don't how know it's pronounced. if that's a name. I pronounced anime as anim back in the day. No. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> this, was, this was before it was a thing. Hey, it wasn't It wasn't a oh, thing back then. Oh, come on. Shut up. It was what a are thing. you talking about? A- Akira? It wasn't a thing. Not Akira, my household. Well, maybe not in your household, but in the 90s, anime yeah. had a huge American like back explosion. then it was called Anna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back then. I'm pretty sure anime has been around since like the fucking yeah. like 50s. Yeah, no, it has. No, no, no. But it, it, it became super popular in America yeah. in the 90s because of Akira. We were learning. We were learning back then. Yeah. But people were calling it anime and I think that was a you thing. Hey, no one in my school, they just said, hey, that's Dragon Ball Z. You just read it. That's the, all they'd say. You read the word in, in WoW chat and you thought it was... No, wow no. Chat. Everyone would, would say Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, yeah. That's all they'd say. They wouldn't say my favorite anime. What is your favorite anime? There was one anime, so therefore the name didn't exist. To us. To us. Yeah, to you. To you. To us. You need to learn from HRH. To me. And, uh, for me. <laughs> end things with, for me. Yeah, yeah, for me. <laughs> to me. Well, you have to shake your head violently and make your hair fly up in front of your face. <laughs> to me. <laughs> <laughs> for me. I was fat. For me. Can we play a... a can we please have HRH like on this podcast? I just want oh. her to oh. be around again. Yeah. Yeah, that'd I be mean, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Actually, a fucking HRH debate would be, that would go hard. <laughs> no, here's the thing nobody, like, me and Ian are deep. It, we, before HRH became big on TikTok, we were, we're, wa- we were, we were spam watching HRH. Yeah, we were she... deep in the HRH lore. Yeah. Um, we watched her. 2017, 2016, yeah. we were watching that that whole uh-huh. evolution. Yeah, she had uh, first video we watched was something like my bag collection. My or bag something collection. Like that. Yeah. yeah, she was like showing off her like designer bags. Yeah, and uh, and the one that you can't get. Yeah, the Birkin. Yeah. Uh, bring it back to Puck's Tony Phil. Uh, you like the idea that there's like this kind of. Like you described as pagan. Yeah. I don't know what pagan is. That's just like non like uh religious kind w- of traditions or like what is wi- that? Wiccan, witchy, right. like just like a spooky belief. A spooky well, belief. Yeah, pa- okay. paganism is like the belief in like spirits, spirits and, and like okay. mo- not a right, monotheistic right. Mm. religion. You think something's creepy going on. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's what pagans think. Yeah. So why well, I, I don't know how I can <laughs> Very Trans- nature centric. Transition that to what I wanted to talk about, but oh. I will either okay. way. The other day, when we had a little bit of an ant problem, yeah, and uh, like since we moved into the place that we're at now, the there has been this like bean bag full of uh, I don't know spices, a bunch of spices and peppercorns or something what? behind the trash can i don't think you've seen it what <laughs> wait yeah, it's a little bag of little spices and stuff spices might be a bad way to describe it what but i mean? think it's got like no. scents like maybe some i'm confused what are you talking uh, so in like, uh, just wait no what, no, no. What don't Stop. animals like wait. A- animals don't like certain things like they say that you pepper is it peppermint i it's think probably peppermint. peppermint but wait can we just back up for a second yeah our trash can mm-hmm. is in a pull-out drawer thing, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Okay, by the dishwasher. Yeah. 
we have the recycling and the trash mm-hmm. in there. Pull it out, put stuff in. Where the fuck is there a spice sack? You're saying there's a <laughs> sack yeah. in our the cavity? Pull out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> behind behind the trash cans. When you pull the trash cans out, it's behind them. So what is this like? And when they're pagan? in there, it's underneath. You them. think like the owners before us were like some pagan? No, and they've been summoning ants no, they definitely the bought it from Amazon. Okay, because uh, it says something on there like Amazon. Ant spice, or something like that. Uh, but I see it in there, and I one time I pulled it out and I like gave it a sniff, and what? I was like, mm, whatever, you like, it? of course, yeah. What to test to make sure it was still like working? What if it's still it was, activated? What if it was like ant poison or some shit? Well, you... I don't know. I, I'm fine. I'm okay. fine. That's all we need to say about that. <laughs> sniff but the I, I toss snap, that bitch sack. back in there, and I like kind of know at this point because we've gone through like two iterations of like ants in our houses. Or two seasons of ants in our house. Yeah. Um, and uh, it it obviously hasn't worked. Okay. Right. But I realize that I have a little bit of a superstition around it, <laughs> and like I want to keep it there because I'm like, well, it helps. <laughs> it helps just that it's there. It's just like another thing, another tool in the fight against the ants. What if it's attracting the ants? I don't think it would do that. No. I don't know. No. The, that would be a very weird product to put out there where it's like, this do, this kills or repels ants, but if you let it sit long enough, it actually attracts the ants. But, so it's kind of kind of weird like but that. But maybe it it's like they just sold, you know, people lie on the internet, uh-huh. right? So maybe someone lied or maybe it's like, a, like one of those things where... Enough people say it that people think that it's true. Yeah, well, maybe the fucking or maybe, maybe the, the opposite. moon is made of cheese. Whatever kind of thing. The okay, just to like our house for some reason, our house is clean. We don't leave food out or anything. But in the bathroom, there's always like an ant or two ants mm-hmm. crawling up and down They're our just shower. Searching. They're just searching for little nummies. They're freaking pissing me off. They're searching for and some nerdy now I'm, now I'm starting to think that your mystery sack is what is no, attracting them. No, no. No, there's, even when I'm feeding the dogs, there's little micro crumbs that, you know, fall out and accumulate. Micro crumbs. You know? It would be nice if the fucking fat Rottweiler would lick the floor clean. The fat Rottweiler definitely licks the floor clean. It doesn't. There's so many little when micro particles I'm that get past cooking, it. When I'm cooking, yeah. that thing is a vacuum. I have to, like, guard the floor. When I'm chopping up onions yeah. and one falls, mm-hmm. she tries to eat it. I have to fight her for the onion. Yeah. Well, the ants don't even want onions anyway. Okay. Well, I'm telling you, though, she'll eat. She eats everything I fall, like that falls on the floor. Yeah. Man, it really sucks how, how many micro crumbs are in our water system. Micro crumbs. <laughs> They're everywhere. Um. Especially the food we get, man. They got a lot of crumbs. Micro on crumbs. Them. Yeah, a lot of micro crumbs. We need to throw out the spice sack. No, I don't think so. Why are you smelling random it's just, sacks? It helps. It, ha- <laughs> <laughs> it. He's a bit of a sack smeller. I don't know. I think there are a lot of things out there that do, that do work. Okay. You know, at least for the peace of mind. You know. Okay. It makes a difference. Maybe we should phone an ant person. Yeah. But I mean, this like a giant ant, (laughs) (laughs) a person dressed as an ant. No, an ant dressed as a person. Whoa! Now we are going to ombuds. We got a lot of comments on the last podcast. Uh, Obviously, I had my stomach virus at the time. I talked a lot about vomiting. Yeah, you got your stomach pumped as well. Uh huh. I got it pressed on. We found a lot of micro crumbs. <laughs> micro crumbs. Uh, someone says, "Sound." This is twenty-one upvotes. Sounds like you got Crohn's, brother. Yeah, I don't know something. <laughs> so, just to clarify, yes, he did have norovirus or whatever the fuck that was, but that doesn't uh, negate the fact that, like, the vomiting just kept happening. You and do this have is the that problem. problem. I've had. Yeah. yeah, I vomited when I got mm-hmm. sick with what you had. I puked once. Mm-hmm. Wow. Ian puked eight times in like four hours or so. No, no, it was more than that. It was like, it was between ten o'clock and like two a.m. You well, puked eight yeah. times. We don't need to get the math exactly. Is that is that what Crohn's is? We puke. I thought Crohn's was shitting. Yeah, it's both. Yeah. But anyways, but that aside from the cyclical puking that you do have an issue with, you also like certain foods do 
Yeah, bubble my gut. Yeah, bubble your gut bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, bubble so my gut. We do have to go to a, a gastro doctor. I love her so much. <laughs> she makes me feel like I got bubbles in my gut. <laughs> she makes me bubble my gut something serious. <laughs> something serious. So I, I do think there's something going on. Thrones, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. It's something, though. Uh, it's bubble gut. <laughs> the next comment says, Ian has GERD. <laughs> it could be GERD, um, too. Yeah. What's good? It sounds made up. What is no, that? Oh, it's like acid reflux shit. Um, oh, is it an acronym? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was just a word. You got the GERD. Uh, now someone says, my brother had symptoms similar to Ian, and it turned out to be Gilbert syndrome. It causes super bad nausea, but I think it can present with other symptoms. It's l- worth looking into, <laughs> especially if alcohol may be involved. Mm. Why are all these so funny sounding? <laughs> you got the Gilbert Godfrey disease. <laughs> uh, Makes you sound like a duck. Someone said so- several kinds of beans, if pa- prepared incorrectly, are poisonous. Didn't end up being the case yeah. here. Uh, Was not the beans. Beans were fine. They're just a little spicy. Yeah. I think you just don't react to beans particularly well, and because you were already sick with the norovirus, it and it Probably inflamed it. Yeah. Probably didn't help. Yeah. I think it was a combo, a combo of your pre-existing stomach problems mm-hmm. with with the with virus. the classic N yeah. virus. Uh, this one's interesting. They say the cyclic spewing I had during COVID. By the way, spewing, an Australian term, oh. spew. Mm. Just thought I'd educate. I thought it was more of like a YTV term. Which which yeah. country says upchuck? <laughs> Canada. Uh, some specific parts of the U.S. Yeah. Upchuck. <laughs> Uh, I lost so much weight that uh, all the weed I smoked got uh, released back into my system. <laughs> I've had <laughs> I've had it with alcohol back in the Aussie binge drinking days. Hope it doesn't happen again, mate. Nothing worse, hey? Fuck. That's that's really interesting. Yeah. You you store weed in your fat? Yeah, I think so. Right? I, uh, Isn't that a thing? Yes, I think. Well, I'm not going to say it confidently, but weed stays in your system really, really long, so I would assume that it is stored in your right. fat. That's cool. That. Um, oh, man. Yeah, that's, a, that's too long of a comment. Uh, <laughs> when I was in elementary school, my friend told me about how four of her brothers and friends – oh, yeah, this one was related to Anissa's motorcycle uh, story Yeah. about how a friend of yours – A co-worker. Uh, co-worker passed. of yours, yeah, yeah passed uh, – Just as it relates to motorcycle stories, I don't think it hurts to share. When I was in elementary school, my friend told me about how four of her brother's friends died in motorcycle accidents all within the same week. Yeah. Whether or not that story was even true, it stuck in my mind, and I've never even thought about possibly wanting to drive a motorcycle since hearing that. Yeah, I'm actually, like, very pro scaring people out of, like, driving motorcycles. Mm -hmm. I just saw a fucking, uh, it's really weird. Uh, I saw this tiktok of this woman climbing she was doing mountain climbing Mm -hmm. climbing and that shit was so fucking terrifying yeah all the top comments of people like watching this like very raw real like desperate situation that this woman was in yeah because technically she wasn't in any any actual danger because she had she was locked in still very fucking scary because the locking mechanism for her in that particular area was uh uh an uh one of those little fucking little monkey fists that you put in the cracks and it expands. Yeah. Like it wasn't a like a relay system or whatever yeah. where someone's got you. Yeah. Uh, so it is still scary yes. because you're relying on that to not bust loose. And you can just tell that she was fucking petrified. And she eventually got through it, but she was like almost making those I'm about to die sort of noises yep. while she was getting like – in this, these uncomfortable positions, and all of the comments were like, "Yeah, you don't, you don't have to mountain climb. Like, you don't have to do this." Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> that's how yeah, I feel. Just a when bunch I of different those, iterations of that. The cave crawling shit. I know that everybody's dude. been sharing lately. The the I don't know what it is. That one is so hard for me to relate to. The I crawling get the mountain the, climbing more than that. Yeah, I get the mountain climbing more than the crawling in the, the <laughs> fucking cave systems. We've seen so many lately of just like people who have no business. Like, what are you doing? It's so scary. The, there, there's one that it has been talked about ad nauseum, which yeah. is like the, it's called something stupid. The birth like canal. the peanut butter fucking locker. Oh, what? 
Some I thought we were talking about like the birth that. canal one. Where well, like... that's a section in that one. Oh. It's called like the muddy foot. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> Imagine dying in the muddy foot peanut butter <laughs> foot locker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They got to read that out at your wake. <laughs> in the birth canal of it. Yeah, the birth canal. Right. I think he thought he was in the birth canal, but right. he was in an area that extended beyond where birth anyone canal. had gone before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, okay, wait, I want to retell so this because up. it was so fucked to watch. Even, like, all we were looking at was, like, a, a drawing. Hey, Dane, look up Peanut Butter Falcon. See what that gets up. <laughs> Peanut Butter Falcon is a movie. <laughs> a really good movie. Um, no, no, no. This, it was, it was basically just a drawing that we were looking at while somebody was, like, narrating through oh, kind of what it's happened. it's called Utah's Nutty Putty Cave. Nutty Putty Cave. And, and so basically this guy who was very big, like six feet, feet plus, uh, uh, pretty thick guy, he was crawling through this very small space. And uh, there's this point that you kind of like have to get over. There's like a little bit of a hump. And most people, there's like enough room in that area that you can turn around and go back out. And the last time somebody got stuck in there, they were like five foot seven and like 140 pounds. And uh, they tried to like turn around and it was pretty difficult for them and they got rescued. This guy didn't think he was there yet or like, oh, no, he was too big to turn. That's what it was. He was too big to turn around in that area. Mm -hmm. So he looked forward and thought that he saw that it got wider if he went further down. So the the hump that's there, he sucked his gut up and like pushed forward and then basically like slid down into a handstand and was just fucking yeah. stuck. Just couldn't get out from that point. What the f Yeah. What? I don't know how long he was stuck there for specifically, but it was one of those things where Well he died. Yeah, so. eventually. But it, I mean that's a slow death. Yeah. I was thinking between... You gotta think about things. Between that death, between the one of the woman just jumping into a frozen oh river... Oh, my God. That and, one fucking... Uh, and then jumping into, uh, like, uh, off a cruise ship into complete darkness. That one? There was another... Which one's the worst on that one, you think? The, I think Nutty Putty. Nutty Putty, by yeah. far. Okay. I mean, the the cruise one is second, <laughs> yeah. but Nutty Putty by far. There was also another one recently of a guy who snuck up. I think it was like in Singapore. He was like an American. I don't know if he was American, maybe Australian. I can't remember. But he base jumped off of a really high building, but his parachute didn't yeah. go. That's not um, too bad. Oh, for him, for everybody else, it's yeah. that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like. I mean, for everybody else, I'm fine. Why cleaning it up and shit? I don't know. I for me, like that type <laughs> okay, of shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right, just, it's a mess it's a for lot. everyone. Right, that's a lot. Right, right. The woman who jumps into the river that just goes off. Yeah, you're just kind of like, all right, that'll be easy to deal with. And time and at comes. least like, I mean, the you know, I don't know. Yeah. It's, no, it's fair enough. Lot, so. uh, another comment. Uh, actually, a lot of people were trying to help me on the comments. Bless your hearts. Bless your souls. Uh, you are trying to come up with the song that I was thinking that it was. Um, and the suggestions were, uh, is Ian thinking of the song I Ran So Far Away by Flock of Seagulls? It wasn't that. Oh, yeah, this is the this is the song. Yeah, play the song. Winking there's a original. And I ran. I ran so far away. <laughs> this isn't it. This Me isn't what I thought it was. Uh, another person said that it was potentially a redemption song by Bob Marley, or that was not, not that it was potentially that. It was potentially what I was thinking it yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, to me. Which is good. Because I'm very familiar with the Redemption song. I've listened to it many a time. Uh, but it's not that one. It's not That's not the one I was thinking of. But it is close. So I will give the commenters credit. Really, really good uh, effort on the commenters' part. Yeah. Thank you. You make me feel less crazy. <laughs> make me feel more crazy. <laughs> um, what else do we have? Uh Oh, okay. So now we're on kind of the topic of microwaving food at some of these restaurants. Oh. We had a whole thing about that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Someone said, I used to work at Ground Round, 
pretty much like a whiskey creek, but also kind of sucked. And they had microwave for cakes and mac and cheese, etc. Uh, the cool thing was that the microwave would heat things up a lot quicker than the ones at home. So maybe a more industrial microwave cool. and specific to certain items. Yeah. Like I think if you were to go to a Sheets or uh, a Wawa, like if they give you any mac and cheese to go, like of course they're microwaving that shit. You know, they got it straight from the freezer food aisle and yep. they just heat it up in a microwave. Yep. So, you know, of course, some higher end restaurants will also do that. Yeah. That's if fair. it makes sense. Yeah. Um, someone was saying, uh, is Ian sound blind? Uh, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. You mean tone deaf? And yeah, that could be it. I could be tone deaf. <laughs> sound blind. So, that's what I call I didn't, that's I a good one. Sound blind. I think you're sound blind. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> sound blind. But about the the microwave is just a tool. Yeah. yeah. It's you a know? tool. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily bad. It's just a know. it's a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you want something to become soggier, a microwave is a good thing. <laughs> because well, like th the the cake thing makes sense because you want it to be moist. What's the difference between soggy and moist? Someone said, uh, I don't ever want to hear you guys platform hate on Texas Roadhouse again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy about that? Don't platform hate on Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> that just unlocked a memory hmm. for me. Us going to uh, Korean barbecue with Alex Wasabi mm -hmm. and him talking about how oh, much yeah. he fucking loved working at <laughs> Texas Roadhouse, yeah. specifically singing. Yeah, yeah. He talked about how much he loved singing yeah. Happy Birthday and doing Happy Birthday performances at yeah. Texas Roadhouse. That shit's crazy. I didn't even know they did that. Now I associate yeah. Texas Roadhouse with Alex, with Alex Wasabi. Wasabi. Yeah, I yeah. could picture him in the whole fucking getup. He would love it. Yeah. I could, you know, um, what is it? I think it's called Waiting, the serving. Uh, comedy movie. It's a really good movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're a server, I think mm. it's very relatable. But there's a, I think it's that movie. They have like a parody um, restaurant, rival restaurant that's called like Smiley's or something. I can't mm. remember. Somebody can help me out. I don't even know if I'm thinking of the right movie, but they wear suspenders and they have to have all these like, um, pieces of like uh like pins and Remember, stuff. oh yeah. yeah i think i've seen that they call it flare in uh flare. office space yeah. yeah oh maybe it's office space i'm thinking of you could be yeah yeah because that's a, like a pretty like uh big joke that yeah. they, they play out in office okay space i think well. i'm thinking about office space and they're talking about like you need more flair or whatever but i could see alex wasabi being the flair king of right. that restaurant like he belongs there i feel like Ethan Slater is like a flair king. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Ethan Slater. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That guy sounds like, his name sounds so famous yeah, already. No. But he's just like a. It sounds, Ethan Slater to me uh -huh. sounds like someone who works at uh, uh, Texas Flair, <laughs> that flair restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Ian, you could be thinking of Christian Slater. He's an actual actor. He's like yeah. a famous actor. He's no, but that's what I mean. Actor. It's like a combination of like Ethan Hawke and Christian Slater to make the ultimate Hollywood king. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dane, are you questioning his SpongeBob performance? I mean, he's on Broadway. Yeah, right? yeah. that's and maybe up. and maybe theater kids would be mad about that, but I don't really watch that. So. Uh, I haven't gotten around to making my 2024 predictions list, so I just yeah. want to throw this out there. I'm just going to double down on it. Yep. Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater are going to have a child. Ian's very confident. They're going to get pregnant. She's going to get pregnant. With yeah. And it's going to be it's going to be a clam. Devil spawn. Okay. Yeah. Remember oh, remember the episode where Patrick and, oh. and SpongeBob have the clam baby? It's going to be like that. <laughs> I well, forgot that that episode existed. That's so <laughs> fucking weird. Wait, okay. So, when Ian when Ian came up with this, he had like a Raven Simone moment and then mm. it just came out of his mouth. So, uh -huh. I think it's true. I think that Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater are going to have a baby. I don't know what it is. I just feel like the bond there, not the bond there, but uh, the... The trauma bond. <laughs> no, there's just something about it, right? Like, yeah, the vibe. There's got to be something more to this creature. Oh, like high fecundity rate? Or <laughs> I mean, no, I bad. saw, I saw like, a, I forgot where I saw it, but uh, somebody was pointing out that that guy looks a lot like her brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And honestly, it, it might be some sort of Freudian... Could yeah. be. Uh, event. Yeah. A Freudian event is what they call it. A Freudian canon event. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone says, was Dane the guy in the beginning of the Tana content comp? 
Uh, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait. That's what Chad we... Roberts. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Anything for views. I feel like... Um, I've gotten that good... before. People are saying that I look like uh, Chad. What? That's interesting. I think it's just because I'm fat and have a beard. It's all it really takes. Right. I mean, like, people make these very simple connections. Like, people used to say I looked like Harry Potter when I was growing up because I had glasses. It's, mm. Yeah. You know? True. No, that's fair. People, uh, people draw very simple lines. <laughs> I, think, I think that's probably a... Were you planning on this podcast to do, like, a Dane uh, introduction? Uh, I wasn't, but uh, we can have that as one of the segments. Okay. What? We well, just, we, yeah, yeah. I'll just wait, I guess. Yeah, well, I was just gonna say that we. Uh, I know that a lot of people watch the podcast. They're at least familiar with your like role in maybe the hot seat or whatever, but they don't really know like how we met or like what the background is, and that we've like made documentaries together. Oh, right, okay, and all of that kind of stuff. So that I just wanted true. to, you know. Put it out there, like, if we do it in a few different uh, stages, I think, of the podcast's growth, then people will be, can either reference it or it'll be part of the brain. Yeah. The collective right. brain. Um, oh, this is one I just wanted to talk about uh, a little bit more at length. Uh, someone says, counterpoint uh, about the... Shutting down Applebee's is a classic take. Local restaurants could exist if Applebee's went out of business. Cla wait, classic take? Oh, you Classist, mean? sorry. Oh, oh yeah. sorry. Yeah. So wait, what, what was their counterpoint? They were just saying that local restaurants could exist if Applebee's went out of business. Mm. Right. Um, and I just wanted to bring that up. I think you guys would generally agree with this, that that is generally like a very idealistic view yeah. of how people operate. Like in the absence of an Applebee's, uh, naturally a mom and pop shop is going to open up. Yeah. Uh, and that's not always what happens. Sometimes it happens uh, and it's cool when it does. Yeah. And it's nice. It's nice for the community. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's an okay argument, but it doesn't really like. Well, I, I just think there's a huge financial risk with opening Mm -hmm. You know, like leasing something. Well, that's food. why franchising is the most popular form of starting a business yeah. in the U.S. Yeah, like, because it's and then or at also least a, a big like food related business. Like if you're in a small town, what what do food costs like shipping in food? Mm -hmm. What does that cost? Like you have to like hire people. There's just like a lot of upfront risk. Yeah, that I think it. I mean, maybe eventually. Or probably, I won't even say maybe, probably, but I don't know. Maybe that's a, I don't know enough about. It's fine. It, the the, the like, answer is basically that it's totally possible yeah. that a mom and pop shop can open up. But to think that that would just happen is like a bit naive because that's not how it works. Yeah. My prediction with that would be be whatever the new mom and pop store that opens up in place of Applebee's would eventually become the new Applebee's in terms of quality because the more people you're serving, the less like uh, quality your food is going to get. That's just how it works. It's just like the more mm -hmm. people you have to serve, the less you have to yeah. dedicate to quality. I mean, you just have to get it out faster to more people. Right. You have to, you know. But I think they're arguing these, that like, it Quality versus quantity is a, a I think real the problem. argument is just like like they wouldn't branch out and franchise. Like it would just be a restaurant for that town. Yeah, the specific town, and they, but, they cater to their community. So is basically. the problem that it's franchised? I don't really get that. Yeah, I think partially. Well, like, so. Like why is, be, why is the way in which it's operated I'm sure, problem? well, I mean, that's kind of maybe – so Applebee's started as a, I'm sure, at some point, a mom and pop shop. Right. And sure. then they expanded and expanded and expanded. And right. now they are what they are. Well, that's well, that's the kind of the point I'm making. But is. so what the argument, the counter argument to that is instead of expanding and expanding, expanding after they found success, if they didn't expand and expand and then someone else, another mom and pop shop could open up, then – then they could, you know, make their own money, and then it's not just one company. Well, I'm I'm now <laughs> reading into the comment a little bit more because they're saying what they're saying is because I guess the specific thing is referencing to shutting down Applebee's uh, being a classic classist take. Yeah, 
uh, I think the idea is when people like Dane's argument in this case, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that Applebee's is an avenue for a lot of lower income people. That was your argument. That was mine. Dane was uh, you were talking about. So Dane's argument is that he thinks Applebee's is fine or whatever. Uh huh. And then you were saying that, like, Apple, we were both uh-huh. saying, both of us, that, like, it in food deserts, uh-huh. it's a good thing to, to right. have for people, like mm-hmm. a good option. Yeah. And uh, that person is replying to us who's saying that oh. it's good that it's around uh, because we were talking to a commenter that wanted it to get shut down. They were talking about how oh, all yeah. of them should go because they microwave food. Right, right. So all of us were, like, team, mm. it's fine. Uh, but me and you were the ones who were talking about, like, in food deserts, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. but there's a difference between the point that I'm making and the point you're making. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Because I'm saying that it's a good avenue for lower-income people to be able to eat at a, like, higher-end restaurant compared to, like, you know, I can't even think of, like, what a higher-end restaurant mm-hmm. would be. <laughs> like, I haven't been to one right? Uh, in a long time. Yeah. But uh, you guys were saying that in food deserts, it's nice to have familiar familiarity yeah. mm-hmm. and consistency, which is what yeah. franchising, the, the benefit of what franchising is, really. Yeah. Um, well, and part of the problem in this, you know, idealistic scenario that a mom-and-pop shop would just sprout up out of nowhere, like – is the like brand recognition like it sucks sure i wish our culture was different i wish we did have a culture where people valued their like community and who in the community like started this place and they want to support it like regardless of whether they you know appreciate or recognize the branding but you know it, the, the fact is you know applebee's does have a name and so they will get business probably a lot faster in a random town than whatever someone yeah. imagines up on their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's just more of a risk. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I, it's also a lot of risk, and it's you know potentially better to risk someone else's uh, money and supply chain like Applebee's because it's a whole task of options you have to deal with, and not everyone – wants to deal with that which is why i'm saying that it's idealistic to think that it will just pop up it's because you're asking a lot of a community to just be like yep take on a bunch of responsibility and get a loan and do all of these things for what it takes to open up a restaurant so for me the whole like idealistic part of it in my opinion is just that like franchises do exist Mm -hmm. so right it's already that shut down like a Dunkin Donuts would show up Mm -hmm. and then like, you know, you could Mm -hmm. try and open up a restaurant, but like everybody's going to Dunkin if they want to go out. Like I, I just, there's so many franchises that are ready to like roll the dice and take, you know, uh, land Mm -hmm. that I just don't think we live in an environment where if Applebee shuts down, I don't think it's going to open up anything. Yeah. If that makes sense. But fair. I'm also a very pessimistic human being, so. No, it's fair. I mean, I I wish that, like, commercialism wasn't, like, how people lived. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, people are just going to, like, oh, what's around here? Oh, Applebee's. I saw a commercial Yeah, Yeah. for Applebee's. I'm going to go there and not this random place that I've never heard of before. Yeah, I think it's important to note because we're going to probably run into this a lot on our podcast. A lot of the things that we talk about, Uh, I think this is a great example, is like, ideally, yes, ideally, based on the comment, I would, I would love for an Applebee's to be replaced, even, (laughs) even in a fucking town that I'll never visit or whatever, like, hypothetically, it does feel better. Mm -hmm. It feels like, um, you know, we're not letting, we're, we're eating local. Uh, everything's done locally. It's very cool. No massive mega corpse controlling everything. Yeah, we would love that. Um, I would love but that. we're not in living in that reality. So, you know, just trying to make do with what we got. Yeah, and we'll make the arguments based on the reality that we're currently operating in. Yeah. Like it's just not worth it to have that discussion about. By the way, if that Applebee's went away, <laughs> everyone's cocks would be nine inches. That's true. I've I've read the stats on that. I don't think that's true. Oh. Man, if Walmart wasn't here, yeah. Then yeah. then I guess we would go to Target. Yeah. 
which Dollar is General. Exactly, which <laughs> yeah. is exactly what happened in Seattle. Mm-hmm. It's so hard to find a Walmart here, but you know what's really easy to find? A Target. Yeah. Targets everywhere. They no just, Walmarts. They there. just got all the real estate. Yeah. They won that bidding war, whatever goes on behind closed doors, I'm sure. Yeah. It's all controlled. So. Unfortunately. Yeah. I don't know. We're in hell. That's um, <laughs> there, no more options left. Sorry. And this is the final embudsing comment. Someone said, Ian is literally describing the game Days Gone at the start of the pod when it comes to a motorcycle game with quests. Oh. It's a really oh. fun game, actually, and the story is awesome if you want to get into the game knowing the main character is gay and in love with his riding buddy. Oh. <laughs> I'm not making a gay joke either. The story of the game is very obvious that the main character starts off as a closeted gay man and comes out after the apocalypse and is really well written, r- well written love story. That's, That's fucking actually sick. Fucking cool because I feel like recently they've gotten a lot better with uh, writing uh, gay mm-hmm. characters. Man, I love that. Uh, random uh, topic for me. I. One of the one of my least favorite uh, things to experience in life is when you need to shit your pants and or I mean shit in the toilet. Uh huh. Um, oh right, we have to clarify because people take yeah. it literally. Uh, or shit in your pants. I mean, whatever. <laughs> um, and you're at a public restroom and you're not lining up directly outside of the stall to use it. You're like lining up near the entrance of yeah. the room to use the next available stall. Mm-hmm. Um, and fuckers just walk straight in, uh, to the bathroom and will basically get like so lucky to enter the ba- the, the stall as someone's leaving it. Shut up. Yeah. Wait, no. I've had this happen to me so many times. What? It's so annoying. What? The men's bathroom is it's a free lawless. For all. Yeah. I have never what in my gonna life. What are you going to do? You're going to confront someone and be like, I was actually waiting well, for that potty. That's <laughs> never <laughs> I, when you get out of, uh, like, off a plane, uh-huh. the women's bathroom is always fucking, yeah, like, yeah. there's a line every mm-hmm. single time. I have never experienced, even in bathrooms where, like, I'm the first one to line mm-hmm. up, I have never had a woman walk past me. Woman's bathroom stall. is like alliance. Men's bathroom is like horde. That's crazy to me. That actually makes me so fucking mad. Yeah. I can't I mean, it's believe. not, it's not that bad. The problem is, like, there's a lot of fucking just inconsiderate weirdos that just i mean they're in their own world i shouldn't even necessarily call them inconsiderate what there's just like how are they in their own world you i have never once depends on where you're at if you're standing in the entrance of a bathroom yeah and and i like yeah if you walk by somebody standing there and you don't say oh are you waiting for a stall yeah that's intention you're not in your own world that is the Fucking weirdest. Who knows? Maybe got the Bluetooth in and they're talking to their buddy. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. I gotta take a shit. Hold yeah. on. Uh, well, that's the type of person, right? They're, they are in their own world. I have never you heard of, this. This, it's like that one, this is like that fucker who who took our coffee and breathed on it at the airport. That's way different. No, it's kind of the same thing. No, it's not. That's way different. Yeah. If everyone's waiting for coffee and you're just like guessing roughly mm. when your coffee's going to show up and like maybe mm. you hear your name mm. or whatever, is way different than visually seeing somebody standing at right. the entrance facing the stalls right. and walking past them. No, it's true. It's true. That is like but beyond rude. Yeah, I just think it's it's just such an interesting thing. Um, if I were a man, I'd be in jail, I think. Because, <laughs> like, yeah, I, would, I would get violent, for sure. Nah. Yeah. Your reality would be different if you were a man. You would have grown up with all of it, so... Well, am I a big man or a small man? I don't know. Yeah, I'd probably give you a couple inches on what you are now. Well... You'd be, you'd be a six-footer. <laughs> I would. I think I would be in jail, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. You well, know what this reminds me of? Huh. This is adjacent to, like, a... a unreasonable like anger reaction that i get to reading certain comments on tiktok or whatever Mm -hmm. anytime that there's like a video of somebody i don't know being rude or like something happening like some mild inconvenience and somebody filmed it or like somebody like describing as essentially what you're describing right uh there's always ever it's filled with people who just be like my anger issues could never or like, or saying, or saying like, yeah, yeah it would have gone a little bit differently if I was there. I'm like, shut the fuck up. You're a pussy. You're a bitch. You wouldn't do anything. You would stand there and look at the floor. Right. You're on TikTok. Yeah. Right You're on TikTok now. right now. There's absolutely no way. Yeah. There's just all this like, it's mm-hmm. it's it. 
makes me unreasonably angry right. to see so much posturing in the comment section of things. Yeah. It's so funny to me. I don't know. I've lived enough life that I believe some of those people. Like, <laughs> but, they, the, but that's the, the thing, shrieking, though, is like they wouldn't like... comment it. They would watch it, like you or me. But to take that extra step I don't and be know. like, no, all no. right. There's a type of person, for sure. Yeah. Like, let's pretend we're in a Target. This has happened to me. This is all right. I'm envisioning it. Okay, I'm in we're, a target. we're in a I, Target. I'm in a Target in the '90s, and I smell the ices and the popcorn. There's a line beside oh. us. We're waiting for our cash register. All the lines are full. The line beside us. There's uh, a woman who's got a couple items in her hand, and someone butts in front of her because she was kind of looking at like the gum and the the candy that's on the side yeah. there, and she turns around, and she starts screaming, "Excuse me, excuse uh, me!" Yeah. I was in line, and then they start going at it. That is a real person, right. and that is someone who comments my anger issues could never. No, I don't think that that person is commenting. That's you my don't point. Think so? I don't think that. I think that whoever that person I is doesn't are. like use the internet. Yeah, I they, think Dane's right. I disagree. Okay. I think they use the internet and they specifically use it to comment things like that. <laughs> That's their whole. <laughs> Not MO. on TikTok, maybe on Facebook or something. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like there's unhinged sections of the internet that I don't access. But <laughs> the... <laughs> what Dane's describing is literally like a fucking twelve year old girl who says, "My anger issues could never." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like I'm just describing fuck? like yeah, like teenagers who right. are just like you know, they're living in a, a mansion with their parents who. Are yeah. Still together. Well, there's a little bit of that disconnect of like I'm entering kind of the adult world, so like my half my brain is still in childland because <laughs> I'm on like TikTok, but I'm supposed to be like kind of like yeah. I was the relating nastiest. more to older things. I was the nastiest I've ever been when I was 12. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. Publicly, mm -hmm. yeah. the nastiest creature. Okay. There was Publicly someone, nasty. <laughs> there was someone who was telling a story about how they were sitting eating their food and they were watching. Kids got out of school, and the older kids, they were like 12 to 13, and the 9-year-olds. And one of the 12 to 13-year-olds walked over there to, like, say something to one of the 9-year-olds, and the 9-year-olds said, shut up, fat bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so Dude, they exist. I, oh, man. She said she was so scared. I think Dane would laugh in that situation. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> I would want to hurt somebody. Yeah, I know. You would be very <laughs> Which upset. Which makes me scared for like children around yeah you. <laughs> no. like fuck that like actually though what, what? would you what, what do you mean what would you do what's I, the, what's, what's the leave. issue i'd have to leave why what's the issue with that it's just what so out hurting of a child <laughs> no i mean like what's the issue with some child saying shut up fat bitch like it's it, it needs to be taught something. <laughs> See, that's I think that's the disconnect. I don't really yeah. care about teaching them. Yeah. I just yeah. think it's funny. Yeah. yeah. It needs to be there's, humbled. There's a... Oh, okay. Yeah, it needs to be humbled. The, the... Actually, oh, okay. Screaming at the top of your lungs in a child's face, that's not <laughs> illegal. That... Oh, there was a video that went very yeah. uh, viral yeah. of that of a man who screamed in a child's face yeah. at uh, on an airplane. Yeah, and everyone really hated the man. Oh man! So saw, just be aware of that. I saw, a video, saw a video the other day of a man in a grocery store just walking down the aisle, and a kid walked in front of me. He just immediately just fucking clocked it. I saw that. And he and that he. Is so <laughs> fucked up. That I video. love that video, uh, and and it's so funny because apparently, I mean, maybe his lawyer told him this is, but he thought it was a mannequin. Yes, yes. I was just like, it was like, Dude, yes, it someone do mannequins like... just slide in front of you, man? Yeah. He saw a kid saw opportunity and took it. Yeah. Took it. God. I mean, he got the shit beat of him later, which made it funnier too. But I'd yeah. say play that video, but that's not one for you too. <laughs> no, yeah. no um, it's like it's just imagine a child yeah. walking and minding his own business, and then it was a man like, walks kind up, kind of like a punch slash shove. It would, but the hit the kid went on the ground. Yeah, the kid yeah. got floored. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Uh, there's this um i just want to like share yeah. this there's this high school that me and ian walk by uh to go do certain things like go to the gym and stuff and there's like a bus stop sort of place right beside it maybe like what like 20 feet away um and there's always kids there smoking Doobies. cigarettes resin maybe i don't know it looked like they it literally looked like um they were smoking crack but i don't think it was crack it was like in a pipe though um anyways 
there was these kids that you could tell the guy that was smoking the cigarette, it was it was his first time he had ever put a cigarette in his mouth. And something in me, my like um uh was that called intrusive thoughts said to like make it the most mortifying like cringy first experience for him <laughs> so he'll never do it again i wanted to walk up and be like smoking on the big old stick hey eh? <laughs> <laughs> like getting really excited <laughs> i love the idea it's like the, yeah the most like clownish <laughs> like that <laughs> the ca- chaotic character like, yeah, let's see if I can fuck this <laughs> fucking kid's traumatize this up. kid. Like, yeah, just that's be the so weirdest. Funny. Um, if we did it as a couple, too, yeah, that would just be the, a double whammy. <laughs> hey there, man. You mind if I get a hit? <laughs> Licking my lips. Yeah, literally, like, and then do, like, a little, like, dance. <laughs> yeah, I love the idea of being, like, a kooky, uh, what do you call it, like, Alice in Wonderland character? Yeah. We'd like to smoke a bit of your uh, smokestack there, young <laughs> Yeah, we're putting on accents. Yeah. Just going in and out of it. Pulling up our pants, sticking yeah. our tongue out. Because, yeah. yeah. like, that kid would never, ever do it again. It would be so fun. It's, it's really uh, great, though, the idea, because he did have his, like, two friends there or whatever yeah. who were, like, you know, not... I mean, I guess they were partaking with him. Yeah. But the fact that he would be the one targeted, <laughs> yeah. they would probably come away thinking, oh, that's so funny. But he yeah. would be like, that was done to me. That was to that me. The interaction was all to me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Something overcame me. I was yeah. I really wanted to. but. Oh, man. There's something about that. I feel like I remember this when I was younger. The, like... When older people would approach, like, maybe your group of friends or whatever, but someone in particular was targeted. Yeah. And I feel like my fat friend, Fluffy, was always that person who was targeted. That's sad. And it's super fucked up because I think it was, like, a way for these older people to, like, hey, this is safe or whatever. Or I'll be liked by these kids if I maybe say something to the fat kid. I don't know. Um (laughs) The fat kid's my in. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I I feel like that happened at times when yeah. I was younger at the beach or at the, not the skate park, but at the school and stuff. What do you, what? so to approach you for what purpose? I don't know. Well, I, one of the ones that just popped in my head initially was, like, we would skate at this local church. Mm. And it was a youth pastor or whatever that wanted oh, to, like, right. talk to us. I remember that yeah. one. Yeah. Um. There were other times where it was maybe just a random teacher that wanted to talk to us or a, I don't know, a homeless guy that wanted to talk to us or Classic. a pedophile that wanted to talk to us. Which did happen to you yeah. once. Were you with Fluffy? No, you were with no. Mickey and Chuck. No, we were all like kind of separate because we are all going home in different. Yeah. Uh, we are all at different did spots. We t- I think we told the pedophile story here. I think so. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, oh, I was going to say, in regards to, it's not illegal to scream at kids, uh, in their face, uh, it reminds me of that one woman, I think that it was, uh, like a man on the street segment yeah. in, like, the UK somewhere, yeah. and there was just, just, like, uh, this larger woman and her husband, she was wearing, like, a big, I think, red coat or something, and this guy's doing a man on the street segment, like, interviewing random people and he's like uh do, would you like to do something for a dollar or whatever like something uh for a dollar and then he was trying to get this woman with a red coat's attention and he was like oh lovely lady something for a dollar woman in red woman in red and then something snaps in her and she's like get, i want this guy to fucking leave me alone so she just turns at him and goes ah! i actually love that so much i want to do that to people who annoy me. I've only ever done that once. Uh, in public. At a bar. Yeah. Yeah. Did they jump in fear? Uh, no. It, and then it made me never want to do it again. Because yeah. everybody tells you, like, that's the thing to do. Um, and we were at a bar, and there was this guy that, like, he kept... So when you're a woman at the bar, there's guys that just come up and talk to you. That's totally fine. The ones that suck ass are like when you're dancing with your friends and they kind of just like dance. Try to make it happen you. near you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you actually did a very funny parody of that on, your on my TikTok, TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. Where you're dancing around. Hey, we actually, could probably bring that up. Bring that up. I'll show you an example of. Uh, uh, it will be in um, my stories or my videos. Yeah. In his videos. Uh, scroll down. Oh, oh, far right. It's 126. It's got the big blue uh, ass. Yeah. The blue. That one. That one. Yeah. 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 See that? 
<laughs> so, and he was doing that. And so I was like. We're going to have to mute this. Yeah, I'll mute it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so basically there was a guy that was doing this exact thing. <laughs> and I turned and I screamed. Uh, and. Uh, all right, that's enough. Dane, I can't hear myself. <laughs> oh, sorry, I can turn it down. I'll just I'll play it, though. So, yeah. Okay, there we go. Wow, that was perfect. Um. So yeah, basically, uh, I turned and I screamed at the guy, uh, and he just stared at me like I was the weird one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he just kept doing it, Ugh. but only to my f- other right, friend. Right, right, right. So Ugh. I was like, "Well, this didn't work." Yeah, <laughs> I feel like maybe not in a club setting it mm-hmm. will work, but right. in a club setting, there's just so, so much going on that I. I think there's a lot of things that you can do that are out of left field. Yeah, uh, screaming is a very bold one. Yeah. It definitely puts the target on you yeah um but the the great thing about the woman who screamed at him is that he physically jumped and recoiled he was like jump scared by it and it was like oh as soon as she got that it was like you did it i also killed him i think the guy being drunk also right screaming the the guy that i screamed at oh yeah yeah. um Mm -hmm. he didn't like his reaction time he was like yeah just caused other people to look at me Mm -hmm. and that guy to be like yeah. And then just so my advice to women is if you're going to scream at someone outside it should be outside of the club. Do other things at the club cuz it doesn't work. <laughs> apparently. Yeah. Time and place as well. Time and place. If you're in an airport, maybe not. Yeah. But- if you're just walking around the random street, you know, you can, you can sure. get away with that. Yeah. All sorts of screamers on the street. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh okay. So why the hell did I bring up any of that? I don't know. I think you just wanted to tell people that you wanted to punch a child. No, I never said that. <laughs> um, found a, an article. Oh, maybe I should skip it. Huh. Yeah, I'm going to skip it. Because uh, I want to talk about... <coughs> bless you. Oh. I want to talk about the Super Bowl. Are you ready for the... Super Bowl. Look, I'm doing a link from GMM. Nice. I love that. I don't even know what that means. You know, in Good Mythical Morning, when... Well, when Rhett's saying Rhett something, says, Link will do some random bullshit. When, when it's specifically when Rhett goes into An caster, announce. announcer oh, okay. voice, and then Link is always huh. slowly like... I never paid attention to that. Really? Cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so... We're obviously not crazy about the Super Bowl. Dane's been getting into sports lately. True. Um, basketball, though. Basketball. Yeah, not though. football. Not football. But he can appreciate the passion that others have for it, and he can appreciate it as a sport. A lot of <laughs> Not really. <laughs> he can. Oh, man. Um, Football's too boring and slow, and, and it feels like you're Sisyphus. What does huh? that mean? You have syphilis? Sisyphus. What? The guy pushing the rock up the fucking thing. Is that where the word syphilis comes from? <laughs> no. Uh, the guy pushing the rock up the thing? You mean, like, That's it's boring? Uh, no, I mean, like... Doing the same to, thing over to me, and over again? No, no. It's not doing the same thing over. It's just, it's like... Laborious. Very, it's laborious, yeah. It's just like getting the ball from one end of the field to the other takes, like, 20 minutes. Being Dude. a basketball fan is the antithesis of being a football fan. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, compared to how many times you score in a basketball game to yeah. how many times you score in a football game. And also the stoppage. And it's just, it, I feel like, comparatively, basketball is just more exciting to watch because you're just watching yeah, but action think, all the time. Yeah, but football, you have those moments where it's like a fucking full-on bust like you bust wide open yeah like a big I, orgasm <laughs> you know what i mean yeah when, when the guy gets the ball and he runs like 20 feet and everybody cheers yeah no, I get it. when there's a hail mary pass and he throws it all the way down the freaking field and they make True. so many yards I, yeah but how many games does that i mean i feel like that happens once every like four games you know what I mean? Yeah, true. I only really see highlights of that happening every once in a while. I don't true. know. Uh, I, but I, I don't want to piss off football fans or anything. It's just I much prefer like a more – I mean, it's very comparative to the way that I enjoy video games, right? True. Like we've talked about this before where you yeah. like you like snackable games. And yeah. football and it's baseball snackable game. are snackable sports mm. to watch because, you know, when they're – Figuring out what they're going to do in the next play, you can take a snack. I right? love tactics. I love but, thinking about it with them as yeah. they're taking a break. Yeah, yeah. So here's the it's a turn-based game, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the interesting thing for me is, like, I grew up playing lacrosse, and I love lacrosse, 
and mm-hmm. lacrosse, the pacing of lacrosse is very similar to the pacing of basketball. Or soccer, yeah. I think I would actually like soccer also, but, but it's not very popular in the U.S. It's interesting because I don't like watching basketball, but I love watching football. And I love watching football because I love that they're fucking, they have all these fucking plays and you set up your mm-hmm. chess and then you go yeah. for it. Like that to me seems, I think maybe it's because I, I play the fast paced sport mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that I can be like, oh, this is a, a cool, different, thing. different right. thing that I can like. I mean, but I you like also both. watch hockey and you I, like I, that. I like, yeah, I yeah. like, I like. It's not that I won't watch basketball. It's yeah. just I find it interesting that, like, uh, some people are – it is the pacing. Yeah. Some yeah. people, the pacing is very important. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was saying that Dane really appreciates a good Super Bowl. Um, this, <laughs> I don't. The spirit of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, there, he also appreciates the spirit of the puppy bowl. Oh, Dane, you're a Puppy Bowl fan. Nice. What? <laughs> Wait, do you know the Puppy Bowl, Dane? Isn't that like a halftime show thing? Or or no, no, that's like, oh, you know what? It, I, I do know what it is. Okay. It's yeah. Animal Planet. Yep. They just have a bunch of puppies. Do with they little... still do that? Is Animal Planet even around anymore? Yeah, they yeah. still do it. Uh, and uh, it, yeah, it's a, it's a famous, it's a very famous thing that they do. Uh, I feel like the... it's a little patronizing, don't you think? For the what? puppies? No, because it's like when people, when the Super Bowl's on, there's like people who comment on it. There's like, yeah, I don't really care about the Super Bowl. And so like, I feel like what they did was they're like, how do we appeal to those people? Yeah. We come up with something that's like the opposite. I think. And then people can say, I don't like the Super Bowl. I like the puppy bowl though. I love that. Why is that patronizing? Yeah, it's I, just, like- I think it's patronizing to like people who aren't into football. What? It's kind of like making fun of them a little bit. Well, oh, you know, like sports. Here's a little little puppy game. It's like okay, so <laughs> yeah, they could put. I will admit, they could have put more effort into it, where they're like, yeah, all right. So you guys don't like football. You like animals. So we're gonna do something called Shark Day or something like no, that. No, no, I. The, the thing <laughs> where they is, do a big twenty four hour documentary on sharks. The nice thing about the <laughs> Super Bowl is mm-hmm. that it is like a time for people to gather and just right. have something playing in the background on the TV, and you're hanging out with your friends. Right. The Puppy Bowl is like a fun because you want to comment on things, and if you're not interested in watching football, right. I don't think there's anything wrong with having something that runs alongside it that mm-hmm. can allow you to like bond with your friends and eat snacks and yeah. be like, oh my God, the right, Rottweiler right. freaking rubbed its ass <laughs> on the grass yeah, for a touchdown. True. Like, I think that's sweet. Cause yeah. like, if you, it's, it's like, I feel my problem though with it is it's a little too remedial. Like they don't do enough. It's literally like the most low effort shit no, where they're like, I agree with oh, that. we got like an assortment of like, I don't know, seven puppies. Like, <laughs> Technically, like five of them are just fully adult or senior chihuahuas, and then we have like a golden retriever puppy. But it's basically puppy ball, no, so no, they're gonna I grab agree. balls and. They should have like a more high effort thing. thing. Yeah, it would be cool to like, because I I do think it's kind of like, um, like even just it being a sports related like couple hour thing where they went through different shit with dot with animals. No, no, I like I just maybe, feel like the Super Bowl is like. Christmas uh-huh. for a lot of people and I relate to being feeling being left out of Christmas right whereas like to give people the Super Bowl experience without Adjacent football the Super Bowl right the, the puppy bowl and like I think what they should do is just mm. up the quality of, of all of that yeah. and have refs like that mm. actually are like right kind of like it, they uh-huh. could make it funny yeah yeah and like get it's very passive it's passive what it is yeah. they're phoning it in i see and i agree with that uh-huh. point. sentiment okay but, cool well we might be able to reach uh exactly what we all want in life uh with this other thing i'm about to bring up which is bikini bottom super bowl Oh, right. So I looked it up because I was getting some weird SpongeBob ads on TikTok. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, why are they advertising SpongeBob? Uh, And I looked into it. And they're advertising it because on the Super Bowl, I think it's February 11th or something, they're doing uh, essentially like a – what is it called? A simulcast of the uh, Super Bowl on Nickelodeon. 
So they're going to be playing the actual game, but not with, like, I think, as far as I know, um, this is kind of how I'm imagining it. Uh, it's going to not have the common commentary from all these other networks or whatever. Oh. Um, they were basically saying, I don't know why this is the case, but they were saying that the Super Bowl isn't, like, kid-friendly. Um, oh. And I'm not sure why Ooh, that's maybe, the case. So the... Uh, it was the article, I think, that I was reading saying that it was I wonder friendly. if it's the halftime show. Uh, they are doing the hat. Well, they are doing the hat. They're doing their own halftime That's show. That's what I'm saying, though, because yeah. wasn't it like they, uh, they were saying, a little too sexy? Too sexy. Right, right. Wasn't that the big complaint? <laughs> yeah, it was like I could somebody see that. was like, pole yeah, dancing. that's why. And so now it's okay. like, a- yeah, yeah. But anyway, the, the interesting part of this is it's a SpongeBob themed. Super Bowl event. Yeah. And they're doing the sweet victory for the halftime show. Okay. Uh, so we get to see the sweet victory thing again, which is sick for the actual Super Bowl. I kind of don't like this because I feel like it's being born out of the weird, like, the being uncomfortable with... Sexuality. Half- yeah, sexuality and, like... Uh, I mean... I don't, th- I don't think it is. I think it's born out of the same thing the Puppy Bowl is born out of, which is, like, everyone's gonna be watching this bullshit. Like, how can we you know, have our own thing associated with the Super Bowl where, yeah. like, if you're not into that, you can still kind of passively participate in it or at least know what happened yeah. and make it a little bit more watchable, especially for kids. Like, I relate to it heavily because I did not like football growing up as a kid into my teens. Yeah. And I would have loved to watch, like, a version of that that was, like, commentated by fucking SpongeBob or some shit. If it's commentated, okay, if they go through the effort of, like, Having him Having, live, like commentary it, like that'd that, that'd be sick as fuck. That would be very cool. I'm just saying that, like, from what I'm hearing mm-hmm. and what I'm worried about is that it's like all the weird parents that are like, mm-hmm. "My kids can't see women's asses." Yeah, they can't. Yeah, and they're watching the SpongeBob version. Well, we'll see. Which is just I'll the play clean it at version. home. I don't okay. think we're podcasting that day, so we'll fucking. When is it? What day? February 11th. Oh. Um. So yeah, might be cool. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll put it on TV. I'll be uh, pleasantly surprised if they have like actual like. We'll see. We need to even be able to fucking report on it anyway. Yeah. I gotta tell people about Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift on the <laughs> podcast after the Super Bowl. Oh so. right, so it's the 49ers and the Chiefs. Yep. There you go. Nice. Whoa. Woo. We got an expert in the building. I'm a freaking NFL expert, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. The The whole Super Bowl thing, I like, I don't know. I, I thought when I was growing up, my impression of the Super Bowl was that there were a few teams that really dominated the Super Bowl. Nah. But to realize that it's just like a fucking, just they're rolling a dice every goddamn year well, and it's just like yeah any fucking random team can win this shit even if you got like green bay know. needs to roll better because yeah they're having fucking man every year well, people keep saying that it's fixed so yeah that shit's so stupid i don't know everybody with fucking... it being so random i don't get the point well maybe if it's fixed the point would be like uh you go around the country having like little bouts of pride that keeps the nfl alive uh-huh. knowing that you're you know, when Seattle won it a couple years ago, I'm sure there were a lot more Seattle people who were like, I'm proud of my team. I'll always associate that win with uh, the story about Kevin Hart taking the trophy. And, oh, yeah, and like holding like, it holding up. Holding it or, and saying, yeah. he like took it from the athlete. <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking did his own like speech that, and yeah. everybody was like mad at him for it. <laughs> it's funny. Was uh, that the one? I think so. Maybe. Anyway, well, if you're associating with that, probably. Yeah, maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe I'm having a... I don't know, though. It all blends in. Yeah, all I know is that one NFL team won the Mm -hmm. Super Bowl, and and, uh, Kevin Hart got very excited. Stolen valor. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Man, all I can think of when it comes to the Super Bowl is the fucking... The rings. Like, they get rings for it. Big-ass rings. Yeah, Yeah, and I just think of, like, uh, fucking Pawn Stars and shit. Where they're like, <laughs> yeah. the, all that shit just gets pawned eventually because it's like, this is actually kind of, I could use a little money. extra money. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, but yeah, that Tom Brady guy has gotten 
quite a few Super Bowl wins, huh? Uh, maybe because he's kissing his kids and sucking all their life force out of them. He's kissing them on the mouth. Making them younger, more Those athletic. are literally the only two things I know about Tom Brady. Is that he kisses Wins a lot of football, kisses a lot of kids. Yeah. yeah. On the mouth. Well, just his kid. Yeah. But his or kid a lot. Know. His oh. kid a lot. He kisses his kid a lot. Which, hey, I'm not here to... I don't have a kid. I don't know how much you should or hey, maybe shouldn't be kissing your kid hey, on Maybe he only does it because it, it's really, really good. Huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm saying. Maybe mm. maybe there's something to it. Maybe he just likes pissing We don't off. understand. Oh, this Everybody. is a good uh, segue, Dane. Oh, uh, to get off of what I was saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to uh, talk a little bit about how Dane and I know each other and why we're here in Seattle filming this podcast and shooting the shit. Um Lore, 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 lore. <laughs> the lore goes back. Lore, yes. lore. So, um, Dane was initially part, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, part of a kind of an uh, online gaming community, a little small like group of people. And um, I kind of, uh, I was going to say infiltrate. I didn't infiltrate anything. But I was brought into that fold um, and... Uh, since yeah. being brought into that fold, I, I mean, I learned about Dane. Uh, that's actually, it was me and Jordan, Rad Jor, mm -hmm. who uh, came into that group around the same time. And uh, yeah, we just got along. And, you know, I think we were making, me and Dane were making content like, uh, what is that called? Like, like in parallel, we didn't do any tandem. collabing in tandem. Mm -hmm. We didn't do any collabing or anything, but we were friendly with one another. And uh, yeah, I mean, we just other. both had, YouTube channels that we were grinding out at yeah. the time that we met. And both gaming, right, at the time? Gaming? Mm -hmm. Was uh, I gaming? Uh, no, because I remember the reason why you were even reached out to by Mac was the person who reached out to you because um, uh, I think she was just more bold about things like that. But we were fans of your videos of, mm -hmm. um, I think it was... Uh, Kickstarter crap. Kickstarter crap videos, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so it was around the time that you started making those videos. Right. Okay, um, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so that was when I started, or I stopped gaming, basically, mm -hmm. and I started making face videos. Okay. Um, and, uh, man, I remember well, there were so many different eras of, like, playing games. I feel, do you remember playing a 3D Plants vs. Zombies? Did yeah. I play that with you? Yeah, I think we might have. Yeah, I think. Uh, like that we, shooter one? <laughs> yeah. That shit was so crazy. Yeah. Um, we should play that. We played that with, uh, I think, Zach Scott. Yeah. Remember him? Mm hmm. Yep. Uh, he also had a YouTube channel at yep. the time. I mean, he probably still does. And uh, so that's how I met Dane. And I think our first official collab was our first official collab, like the uh, Airsoft Fatty documentary. Uh, it depends on how you define, how you define a collab. Because yeah. I've I've been I'd been in your videos in the right and you in mine yeah because you you right. popularized that whole because like remember I got you to just say some shit into a microphone for one right. of my videos and you said Ankle Dane is a very good sentry mate right 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 that's been like a pretty big meme on my channel I think a lot of people who re like redistribute that probably don't even know that you said that okay but, yeah. but it's similar to how a lot of people probably don't know that i sung the hey now you're a keemstar song true true oh shit Whoa, that's true. Yeah, yeah. i didn't even know that <laughs> really oh wow what the so, hell i mean the story behind that is that i just made that as a joke to share it with ian like i had, i had no intention oh. there was absolutely no intention with that going past just sending it to ian as a joke is that interesting? I, I actually I forgot no that that happened. Because, uh, yeah, I, I remember it very clearly. I mean, you, I think, weren't even really planning on making a video about Keemstar at all at the time. Yeah. yeah. I think we were just memeing on Keemstar behind closed doors as a as an inside joke. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. And that was like an escalation of it. Yeah. Where I made that and sent it to you. And then I think you sent it, you showed it to Max uh, Mofo, mm -hmm. and he was like, you should... He told you to put it in the video you were making. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I believe that. There's so many uh, Keemstar uh, content cop, like, lore fun facts yeah. that I think people don't know. One of the craziest ones to me mm -hmm. is the guy in the sewer in oh, the opening yeah. scene. <laughs> I So I didn't know yeah. Ian at this time, I, but I watched the video, and I was like, is that, a like, a 
like a black man in the sewer, but it was Ian's very white friend who was just mm-hmm. extremely tan because he loves walking out in the sun in in yeah. LA. Isn't or, that Clay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's another uh, yeah. lore thing where there's a lot of people who thought that that was I like literally. I had no guy. concept that that was as shocking for some people it as it was. Yeah, because I was not like. You were just like, that's my, that's Claire. Yeah, that's my, yeah, I, like, my white friend yeah. didn't even th- think of his race at all yeah. in that context. Yeah. It actually felt a lot safer because he's just some random white guy. Yeah, but no, uh, he was so tan that, right. like, that, I didn't know that for a long time, actually. Yeah. I had met Clay and stuff, and you were like, yeah, that Clay was in the opening scene. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? Yeah, we had them all, like, tied up and yeah. shit. Yeah. And, like, getting <laughs> drug off. So it was very bizarre. Fun. Also, it's all uh, very dark in there. Yeah, yeah. that's true. True. That didn't help. But that's um, another uh, lore. Yeah, lore fact. Lore fact. Um, but yeah, no, Dane, Dane's absolutely right. We we did collab in, like, these um, other ways. I just, they, they were in very, like, I guess, discreet ways that didn't feel, like, super official it's to the me. Kind, yeah, it's the kind of collab where you just contribute something to mm-hmm. the other person's video. It's not, I, I don't, I don't really ever consider those collaborations because yeah. it's like, I told you what to do. Mm-hmm. Or you, you know, just added something. Send me that a I voice line. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you're right that I think the very first time that we actually officially collaborated, like we both contributed, you know, equal parts to the same project was the Airsoft Fatty documentary. Right. Yeah. And uh, uh, when was that? Like 2019? Yeah, that sounds yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. It was before COVID. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that one was, I mean, obviously a lot of people like uh, Full Force. Uh, I had some random guy at uh, Walgreens the other day say, love Full Force, man. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. to, like, clarify, Dane edits and structures the whole documentary. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what Dane does. Yeah, I'd say that, like, if we were to, like, define roles, like, Ian's entire role is to basically study the subject. Yeah. Be the face of the documentary, essentially. Yeah. Like, and, um, I don't know, just come up with the the opinions yeah uh, <laughs> yeah essentially. the opinions and like, like the angle yeah yeah the angle that you're coming from you're the justin thoreau yeah and louis. um louis. Or, oh yeah justin thoreau is an actor <laughs> <laughs> louis thoreau you're the louis thoreau character yeah and then my role is to basically just organize all of it mm-hmm. uh, into something watchable yeah yeah well and to dane's credit i mean he's he's definitely the one who had like pushed us to do the uh airsoft fatty yeah and to like you know, was I? Yeah, you oh. were super encouraging with it. Like, I mean, we all had talked about it, you, me, and Ben. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. For me, I think it would have been a little bit more like, meh. Uh, what do you call it? Just like sitting on the idea, like, yeah, that's funny. We should do that. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> never do anything. That's just you in general, yeah. though, which is uh-huh. cool because you're kind of like a flint mm-hmm. that just needs to be ignited that's true that's true when dane because dane's very serious about executing the things yeah executing like it, it it almost does feel like dane is like fucking striking, striking. something when yeah. i'll say something and it'll just very plainly say you should do it yeah and it's just like that Which it's like need. really powerful to me i'm like oh and a lot of your friends are that for you mm-hmm. max mofo's that way william osmond's that way mm-hmm. uh dane like the people that you gravitate to the most are the doers the mm-hmm. people who like when you say something they're like why not yeah um it helps which is cool i i like that you've kind of found that dynamic and i mm-hmm. think your best work is when people say why not to you totally. um so all the documentaries are basically you and Dane uh, cooking in that way. Yeah, there's three of them. Yeah. Yes. On uh, Onion's channel. Mm-hmm. And I think that the plan going forward, right, is to put them on this channel. It is, yeah. but it isn't. Like, I know, it's so hard. Well, no, we got to put things on this channel as yeah. much as I hate that. But I can promote it <laughs> on yeah. my channel. Ian has a problem with views. Yeah. He doesn't like low views on things. I don't like low views. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, modern times, basically, you know, we, we were moving to, we had been doing these documentaries and we were like, let's do something a little bit more like permanent. 
Well, I think it's also important to bring up that at the time you were living in Los or not Los Angeles, you were living in like Oceanside mm-hmm. uh, yeah. area, and I was living in Northern California, like outside of Sacramento. Right. So we were we already like any time that we collaborated on something, I had to go to you, yeah. or we had to meet up somewhere. And I think um, when you were planning on moving to Seattle, you reached out and said, "Hey." you want to move to Seattle. So, yeah. Because, I mean, I, d- I didn't really have a whole lot of reason to be living where I was living. I, I mean, My family lives out there, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, I, I mean, I have a YouTube job. You know, I don't I don't have to – I'm not bound by any uh, specific area. And I love Seattle. I've, I've visited here a lot of times, and I've, I've always wanted to live out here. So it was just kind of like a good – it was weirdly – yeah, it was really weird that you were just like picked the city that I wanted to live in. <laughs> yeah, that's so uh, cool. Yeah, cool. so it worked out. Yeah, that's awesome. Very serendipitous. Mm. Yeah, and it feels super good too. Uh, Anissa and I were like, I, I was saying how excited I am for you to like live closer to us because we were we were saying how it does really suck that you know a lot of our you know connections are in LA, um, but at least having someone here is like yeah. a fucking it makes a kind of all the difference i feel like yeah mm. uh, i feel like at least because we have each other we can start to g- grow and like i don't know make more connections, connections. here yeah. and feel a little bit more at home because i feel like that's really all that's lacking at this point yeah. is a little bit more like solid roots i would love to find female friends here it's just so fucking hard and the few times i've tried to make female friends uh p- like post being online mm-hmm. it's been a, a minefield yeah to like try and like meet up with it's just hard to do it as an adult period yeah that's yeah. true too. it's gonna take time gotta I'll, in some ways look at it in this in a similar way that you would like i don't know think about having like uh co-workers or an employee or something like that where it's yeah. like it's kind of a grind you don't like to think of it that way because it's people yeah that you want friendship with but some people just aren't at that moment in their life where they're going to be the best friend to you yeah or you're going to be the best friend to them that's – I've actually considered going back to serving mm-hmm. just so I can, like – Have more opportunities to, to see friends. and meet people. Yeah. That's cool. But – Not bad. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Um, okay. The last thing I'd like to talk about is I saw an article uh, that said uh, you should be cleaning your reusable water bottle every day. Hmm. And this is just a random. What what is that in uh, response? CNBC article. Oh, okay. It just so says article. we've studied over thirty thousand. Oh no, that's not the right one. Oopsies. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 just one of these bullshit articles. It's basically meant to get your attention, and make you feel like you're uh, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It says how to clean a reusable water bottle, according to experts. Uh, that was an- another fucking like alternate title. And I don't know if you guys are with me on this, but, like, articles like this or advice like this is so f- beyond unwelcomed to me. <laughs> like, it it feels like the type of advice – I've, I've written down some additional, like, comparable examples. If there was an article that said, uh, why experts say you should be cleaning your doorknob every three hours – you need a cloche over your toothbrushes. What the hell is a cloche? Uh, it's like this. Like, like the a little uh, lid. A uh, little thing oh. that would like protect your toothbrushes. Or uh, do the lid thing again. That? Yeah. You need to put a toothbrush in a in a glass jar like a like it's the rose from Beauty and the Beast. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um uh, and I could justify all of these. I just have to go into detail. Uh, Wait, so you're you're making these up? Ian's, yes. This is Ian's worst trait, by the way. He <laughs> finds something that upsets him, and then he fucking, like, goes on this weird list rant of, of like, hypotheticals, and he's like, I could justify any of these. It's That is your most boomer man thing okay. that you do. Okay. <laughs> uh, you need to express your dog's anal glands every month. Uh, express? Express. Like, squeeze. <laughs> there squeeze. has to be a different word for that. Sque- no, that's what it is. That's what they call it. Like um, I, I just think of express yourself. <laughs> express That's basically yourself. what it is. Yeah, so exactly. whenever Madonna was singing about that, she meant anal glands. Anal glands. She meant to of a dog. Got <laughs> the, here's uh, the thing. Yeah. I think the article is helpful. Oh. 
to some people who oh, are maybe my using God. the ones that have like plastic that holds bacteria and stuff if you let it like cook in there. Like obviously, so the grossest thing about me, I think in my opinion, my like goblin mode thing that I do is I take a glass and I fill it up with water, I drink it, and then I put it on the mm -hmm. countertop yeah. and I leave it there and I have like my weekly glass. That's fine. The glass that I just refill. That's fine. It's glass, whatever. I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. But some people who are using reusable water bottles, especially the ones with the sealable mm -hmm. plastic yeah. and stuff, they should be cleaning it probably every day. Yeah. I mean, technically, they shouldn't. They should fucking. That article should say, hey, Stanley, hey, Contigo, stop making this bullshit that people have to clean with a, a specific tool every day or by the hour okay but this is like going back to like the conversation that we had about the restaurant the applebee's restaurant or whatever with the guy saying like we're, oh, we're yeah. operating well, in the, real life yeah. well the no. real life being that there are a lot of people who right, have these right. reusable water bottles true that should probably be washing them every true. day true i i hear your point yeah and i say i'm simply complaining about it uh-huh i'm not saying that it needs to be this way okay okay all i'm saying is like the, uh what i'm speaking to specifically to be yeah. honest is like the hygiene portion of this like we're already doing the good thing yeah we're doing what they all asked us to do get reusable water bottles okay you don't yeah. want another chore that's what you're saying yeah and such a fuck it like i get it there's been some articles, some very flamboyant articles about people getting sick or going to the ER repeatedly because this fuck it, they had some segment of their water bottle that was storing fungus yeah. that they weren't cleaning or didn't know was there. Yeah. That's like uh, probably a fault of the company more than the person if it's that fucking advanced to get in there because, yeah, we like – it's it's pretty straightforward. Like it, like even these fucking straws is some weird shit. No, I like, agree. Like drinking – your thing out of the Stanley little straw. It's like all you need, like you said it, is the little glass cup, a steel fucking tumbler type deal. Right. Uh, so there's it. there's a journalist out there that needs to write articles. Mm -hmm. And they were like, okay, I'll yeah. write an article about this. Mm -hmm. It's not like Stanley wrote this article and was like, mm -hmm. by the way, mm -hmm. everybody, mm -hmm. I, here's why you should do this extra chore. It's just like some journalist. No, that journalist, though. Yeah? Shouldn't. Okay. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? I hear what you're saying, Ian. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, uh, hey, if you're going to do that, you may as well do something a little bit more creative that people haven't thought of yet. Okay. You need a cloche over your toothbrush. <laughs> okay? Every time... We've heard it. Every time you flush your toilet... There's shit particles flying all over the bathroom. You got a cloche. Okay. Your yeah, you're right. Your yeah. toothbrush. I mean, sure. Make that. Make but that how about work. this? Here's my response. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. Okay. There you what go. are you gonna do about that, bitch? <laughs> I mean, I I didn't write the article. Don't point. No, me. you're saying I'm I'm not talking about you the article mean? anymore. I'm talking about just people who say you should do this. Who mm -hmm. it? I think it all depends on where it's coming from. Because if yeah. you told that to me out of genuine concern for the poop particles that are getting on my toothbrush, mm -hmm. then I would probably react to it the yeah, way really. that I think you want me to react to it, which yeah. is, oh, thank you. That's good advice. But if anyone else who doesn't know me, mm -hmm. including this fucking person who wrote an article that I don't know, I'm going to say, don't tell me what to do. You don't know me, bitch. Get out of my face. Yeah. No, that's fair. You know also, what I mean? It's all dependent on that. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like when like you're when you're streaming or something and if you say like oh, I'm kind of tired and then these random people you don't know are in chat being like you should go to bed. <laughs> and I'm like shut up. No, I don't need to go to bed. What yeah. the hell? I've never That's this funny. is different for me. Really? This is just an example. This yeah. is just an example. It's Did kind of like you off? Oh yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, That's this fucking is obnoxious. Oh yeah. Yeah. What? This is new to me. Yeah, yeah. This is very <laughs> no, new to me. No, I, 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 and yeah, it's a, it's a, to be honest, it's a really good topic because I do, I feel like I've identified that some people are very comfortable with it. Like, yeah. Um, I just feel like it's like people caring for me. Right. It's, uh, 
I don't know. Do you know what it is, Dane? No, it, it's it? just uh, it could be completely unreasonable to react this way. I react the same way to like um, if I make too many videos in a short amount of time than usual, then there will be people in the comments being like, don't burn yourself out. Yeah. It's just people caring for you. They don't know me. I don't know these people. Right. This is hard like, for me you, to like, understand. You don't know what like level I'm I at. feel I'm like fine. You're, you're assuming Why so are you worried much. about me? This is yeah. so, I, I'm so the opposite of everything that you're saying. Yeah. Like if somebody was like, oh, you should go to bed, I'd be like, hmm, maybe I should go to bed. Like, yeah. or, oh, they care about me. I'm not like, fuck you. You know what it will be? You know what it might be, actually? I think it's just like that article that you mentioned is like ammo for annoying people who just want to like control random people's lives. Because yeah, because yeah. then they that's why then they can like they can read it they yeah. can read it right and they can be like ooh a new thing to tell other people what to do yes yes I can use that oh. to, to barge into other people's lives oh, and preach and Dane. insert myself I can't preach <laughs> that is so true I can't relate to that. Oh, oh fuck yeah that's why I don't like it that's why I don't like it this actually reminds me another one I have listed is uh, my dog growing up had an elevated food bowl. <laughs> what the fuck is that? My uh, mom was worried about this fake reality where your dog breaks, breaks its neck no, because no, it's no. eating it's food fake... too close to the ground. No, some dogs, it, it is good for their necks and stuff, especially long term for them to not be eating that way in Dude, certain breeds. It's a fucking dog. It's just eating shit off the ground anyway. <laughs> It's just, when it's sniffing, its for nose is on the dogs, ground. For, for elderly dogs, especially elevated food bowls are good. Yeah. I, See, I, the elderly. thing is, I don't have a problem with el like elevated food bowls for dogs. You can get that for your dog. I'm saying that if somebody came and said you should get that for your yeah, dog, no, I, yeah, that I don't know. I don't know your dog, but you should get it for your dog. I'd be like, you don't know my dog. It's just like for me, pers for me, for me, a lot of these things that I'm mentioning is like, yes, technically – I could wipe down my doorknob with Clorox wipes every three hours to ensure that all the particles that my family's bringing inside the house uh, don't infect me. Like, that's true. That's a true statement. You're, like, valid for saying that that's a healthy thing to do. Yeah. But there is a limit to all of these things. I'm just trying to explore that limit. Like, what is, you know, and it feels like some people, it feels like the fucking, the advice about cleaning your fucking Stanley drink shit daily is like the limit for me i'm like nah but i'll do it weekly it's just an article okay, well i'm not advocating for people to die we're on a podcast i'm just bringing up something that annoys me i i okay. what annoys you anisa when somebody walks past me in the bathroom and takes a stall okay. that I've been waiting for. And I didn't have a problem with that no i don't have a problem with it i just it's hard for me to understand to like riff off of it yeah, maybe. I think maybe yeah. it's a little bit hard for me to riff off of because it's like I, I'm just thinking about like a random journalist. It's like I have to fulfill my quota of like things that I have to <laughs> yeah. write and I don't know what to write about. I'm just going to write about how people should fucking clean their Stanleys or something. They're trying to be helpful. Yeah, sure. I would I would yeah. say the journalism is less of the problem. It's the people using that information that's but, the problem. But who's we're I feel like we're fighting ghosts. Did someone <laughs> send it to you? Did someone we don't need to be fighting people. I just, there's no fight. It doesn't, <laughs> we, there doesn't have to be a it target. It feels so hypothetical, though. Like, there's no one that's that's linking these articles to anyone. Where did you even find this article? I was just looking up. That's so... I'm just looking for the latest articles. <laughs> no, it, you know, it just... Advice and... Th like, oh, okay, let me, let me give you an example. As I was looking through these articles, there were some where I was like... Oh, it doesn't really, like, interest me because it's not, like, a category, like, politics or something. Not sure. too interested in that. Okay. Uh, came across another one about the fucking Japanese moon landing. I'm like, that shit's sick. I had a whole thing on that. Okay. Um, came across that one, and it's, like, in the sweet spot where I'm like, I, I don't like that. You clicked it, though. I didn't want, I mean, I, but I didn't <laughs> read it. But you clicked it. But I didn't read it. It was clickbait. I didn't even click it. You clicked it. I didn't. I read the headline and I was like, ah, oh, this shit is this is bullshit. <laughs> Isn't that the world we live in though? I mean, that's just yeah. how people consume yeah, every yeah, for sure. thing though. Um <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, we're going a little over well, time. It's just no, it's interesting. Like I feel like we connect on almost like ninety five percent of that's the point of this podcast is we've got to find the things that we don't connect yeah. on. You know, I'm wondering if it's maybe uh, and I 
don't really like encouraging this, obviously, but maybe it, it could be just a difference between Canadian and American culture. Because to me, I feel like what defines American culture to me is just the phrase, you don't tell me what to do. Mm. Yeah. And True. it could be different in Canada. I don't know. Maybe maybe you guys are just like not as offended by someone telling you what you should Canada's, be doing. Canada's like, please tell me what to do. Yeah, exactly. You want <laughs> you want Canada. unsolicited advice. I don't think <laughs> Americans really like unsolicited advice from random people. Right. Like I've had I think it also depends on how it's being uh, said to you. I like the example of the Twitch chat. You basically just I'm saying I'm tired just to say words because I'm Twitch live streaming. <laughs> like, right. it's one of the many things that I could say. I I believe it, like... I'm not giving you 30%. a problem to solve. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think it's a personality thing. Mm. I think it's a personality thing. Could be. Because I love you telling me what to do all the time. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Like, when we wake up in the morning and it's like, where do you want to go for breakfast? Because I don't want to fucking think, like, yeah. I just no, don't. No, no, you're right. You're right. It is a challenge. Yeah, yeah. And you don't like people just telling mm -hmm. you what to do. Like, in our relationship, we are happy because you don't like somebody in your ear mm -hmm. and I love someone in my ear. Yeah. If I could shut off my brain and you tell me, like, this is what you're doing today. This is what you care about today. Uh, this is what you got to clean today. <laughs> okay. Be in heaven. Le yeah, that's that. Yeah, let's. We're gonna we're gonna step that one back because that's not entirely true. No, I'm not saying that you do do that, but I would love it if you did do that. Right, but like not also not entirely true. You wouldn't like be like this is what you're cleaning today. Sure, if you were also cleaning something else. Okay, there we go. We got the. If context. there was a fair, yeah. If yeah, it wasn't like no context. Trade. I don't want you to tell me I to know, do but, things. I know, but there are fucking weirdos uh, who watch this shit. No, okay, no, that's that <laughs> are really looking for any excuse to have a really asymmetric relationship. No, no, yeah. You yeah. mean the woman does all the cleaning in no, your relationship? You no, know, you're right. Okay, we live in a, a world always where it, it's like it's like the universe. Everything is balanced. So when I do something, he does something. That's how we operate. So if you were to tell me what I was cleaning and what you didn't want to clean and you yeah. clean the other thing, mm -hmm. I would love that. Yeah. Some of the time. So, yeah, so long as you like the cleaning, what that cleaning is. What is— I just don't want to get in the hat, you know, like okay. the idea that I, I'm making a decision like, oh, me personally, I like taking the trash out, whereas no, maybe that, yeah, you, you like doing the dishes and doing the laundry. Both, both of, of them us— together. Both of us would do anything and everything uh, true, that true. is in the, the list of things to do for cleaning the house. Yeah. Do you? How often do you clean your toilet downstairs? So I clean the upstairs bathroom. Mm -hmm. You, I don't touch the yeah. downstairs bathroom because only Ian goes in it. But I've like, always wondered. Once, once a month, I'll spray. I got scrub, scrubbing bubbles down there. Scrubbing bubbles. Do scrubbing you, bubbles. Do you like? Uh, um, Put, um, I don't get too advanced bleach with it. No, in no. the shower or any of that? No. no. Fuck. Yeah. All right. Sorry, guys. 12 minutes over. Uh, Why are you apologizing? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, 12, 12 minutes over. Uh, I'm going to let you guys know that we have the, not an extended version, a whole additional version yeah. on Patreon. And we get wild there. We get so much more X-rated. And we well, talk about things that are so much more private. controversial, private. Um, they're X-rated and they're R-rated. So uh. <laughs> we talk about litigation. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what else? Um, um, oh yeah, we're on Spotify. We're on other podcast pa 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 platforms. Uh -huh. And um, and also pretty soon we're going to be putting out some let's plays on this channel. Yes, uh, we recorded ourselves plays. playing some video games, and it was fun. Yep. And you should watch those. Yep, mm -hmm. agree. It's kind of like an additional podcast. True. True. But I'm a lot more annoying, if you can believe that. <laughs> Rare. But instead of looking at our beautiful faces, you look at a video game mm -hmm. being played. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for all the comments. Keep them coming. Oh, and next time, maybe not next time, but the time after, we'll do the voicemails. Yes. Still working on that. All right. Bye, Chuggalos. Hasta Bye. la vista. Hasta la vista, Chuggalos. <laughs>